Why, hello there. It is 108 days until the Shadow of the Earth Tree releases, and this is the Elden Wake Countdown, where every day until the upcoming DLC releases, I will be making a video to make the wait just a little bit shorter. If you would like to join me on the Elden Wake journey to Shadow of the Earth Tree, please subscribe to the Lore Hunter and make sure to turn notifications on to get videos as they come out. Now that I've wrapped up my, like, two hours of covering the uh, Shadow of the Earth Tree trailer, just talking about it, taking a look through it. We are moving on. I know some people, <laughs> it's funny, if I make long videos, people will say, I like the short videos. And if I make short videos, people will say, I like the long videos. So the moral of the story is, just make what you want and somebody will like it and somebody won't. And that's just how it works. But I hope you all enjoy this. Today, what I'm doing is I'm looking through the texts of Elden Ring that includes dialogue and item descriptions, and I am putting in the keyword shadow and just seeing what's in there. So uh, let's get into it. All right, this first one we have is the Perfumer's Talisman, and it says that a talisman depicting a set of perfume bottles raises potency of perfume items there are gardens known only to the perfumers whether hidden on the fringes of the highlands or obscured by shadows inside caves the flowers blossom in secret waiting to impart their scent and you know this probably doesn't have anything to do with the dlc but just interesting phrasing here and you know while we're going down this rabbit hole we may as well take a look at everything that catches our interest Obscured by shadows inside caves. The flowers blossom in secret. Could there be something <laughs> blossoming in secret inside the land of shadow? Maybe? Maybe why is Mikola going there? We'll find out. And then we have the remembrance of the Black Blade, which says, Malaketh was a shadow-bound beast given to his Empyrean. America's sole need of her shadow was a vessel to lock away destined death. Even then, she betrayed him. And obviously, the shadows of the Empyreans are of particular interest when we're thinking about the possible implications of shadows, when we're thinking of Shadow of the Erd Tree. And America's sole need of her shadow was a vessel to lock away destined death. And given that... America's ascension to godhood and the birth of the Erd Tree are both going to be covered in the lore of Shadow of the Erd Tree. I think, you know, we're going to get some potential. We have a good chance of getting more Malaketh content. And it does make you wonder if this whole thing about the shadows of the Empyrean somehow ties in even obliquely with this whole Shadow of the Erd Tree and America obscure using the Erd tree to obscure this place these events and there's not an insignificant chance that the dlc could get into merica and malaketh's you know be malaketh becoming merica's shadow or you know being assigned or however that works exactly and one thing i was thinking about that's kind of interesting with this item description is America's sole need of her shadow was a vessel to lock away destined death. And the greater will's sort of sole need of America is to be a vessel for the Elden Ring and to create some kind of order. It's just an interesting kind of parallel. And I think in some ways the DLC is asking the question, what if, what is America's need of the Land of Shadow? What is... The Land of Shadow being a vessel to lock away. Why is this war, this unsung battle, Mesmer, why is this stuff being obscured by the Erdry? Because there's not too much doubt in my mind that America is behind this whole thing being obscured in the first place. Not only do you have the Baldekin, which is kind of reminiscent of America's bedchamber, but is very sort of Newman in nature, where you have the the black knives and stuff, they're all about cloaking and obscuring stuff. So it seems very, especially with it being about America's rise to godhood and the birth of the Erd Tree, it really feels very likely to me that America is the force that obscured this place. And very interested to know why. 
and next we have Bla Blythe's Gauntlets, and uh, this sort of applies to all of Blythe's set of armor. Blythe, who served as Ronnie's shadow, was a loyal ally who would defy destiny itself if it would have him turn upon his lady. And this kind of continues the discussion about shadows because Blythe is obviously Ronnie's shadow as an Empyrean. It brings up something where it's it's very semantic, but in this case, with Blythe, who served as Ronnie's shadow, you know, it's a shadow, and generally the shadows for the Empyreans are sort of like the shadows of Yarnum where they're following closely behind, like it's your shadow. You, you can't escape it. But obviously... With the shadow of the Erd tree, I, that's it's sort of shadow can also be used to be like shadowy or shady or something happening, sort of where you can't see it, like happening in the shadows. And the title Miyazaki had mentioned that there's multiple meanings to the title, the shadow of the Erd tree, and obviously the shadow of the Erd tree is referring to the shadow tree, but also the shadow of the Erd tree, sort of what happened in the shadows what has been obscured what happened where people couldn't broadly see it and I think that's an implication here and with Blythe I just wanted to point out within the context of Elden Ring as sort of a work what shadow is being used to convey and you have the shadows who are closely following their masters but um, it's interesting here with Blythe it's very much Blythe is Ronnie's shadow in that he's extremely loyal to her, just like Malekith is very loyal to Merica. But Merica, by being the way <laughs> by being the way she is, changes the meaning a bit of Malekith in that he's obscuring and hiding something. In this case, he's being kind of a shadow for destined death by being the thing that obscures it. So it's just interesting, just thoughts, just spitballing. This whole thing is really just spitballing. And next we have the Raging Wolf armor, the poster child armor for Elden Ring, worn in all the marketing materials. It says, armor worn by Vargram the Raging Wolf, one of the first tarnished to visit the Round Table Hold. According to the old legends, wolves are the shadows of the Empyrean, and this is what Vargram aspired to be. And it's interesting in this context thinking about this, because this has been an item description we've had since the closed network test, so I've been thinking about this for years, but um... It's interesting thinking of Vargram and the tarnished, like, their their aspirations to be Elden Lord and thinking of that in terms of also being a shadow to an Empyrean who would then ascend to godhood and you would be, you know, the consort to that because you always have, like, in the goddess and then the Elden Lord with Placidusax. You had Placidusax as the Elden Lord and then he had is God, and then, you know, you have Merica, and, and she had Godfrey, and then Radagon as the Elden Lord, so the Tarnished as Elden Lord, but also Vargram aspiring to be sort of a shadow, which, as we described, like, very loyal to, to an Empyrean, you know, to be that loyal protection. And not a new concept, but one that I'm just thinking of is, obviously, we have within Elden Ring the context for the Empyrean being someone chosen by the Two Fingers as a candidate to be someone who could be the vessel god for the Elden Ring. And it's interesting because that uh, the the term Empyrean, on the one hand, kind of has this D&D roots, which I'm sure is part of the basis for it, where it's like uh, a child of some gods, and, you know, it relates to gods and stuff, and I could see why they would use that term in Elden Ring. But then also in a, like, Christian... Cosmology, the Empyrean is like uh, the source of light, like the highest part of heaven. And it's just interesting to have this whole juxtaposition of this Empyrean as this highest source of light and for the Empyreans to all have a shadow. So you have light and shadow. And so here with Vargram's wolf armor, the raging wolf armor, you have wolves are the shadows of the Empyrean, these highest this highest source of light, this highest, you know, these demigods who are closest to being gods have these shadows assigned to them. Speaking of Empyreans, we don't really know anything about, like, Melania's or, you know, especially applicable to this DLC, Mikola's shadow, if he even had one. But I was also thinking about how at the very beginning of the trailer, 
Mikola is referred to you as like pure and radiant, which also ties into Empyrean being like the highest point in heaven, the source of light, pure and radiant, and then the shadow. And, you know, there's the shadow of the earth tree, but then it does come into question, is there going to be anything about Mikola's shadow? Like, does Mikola have a shadow at all, and will this come into play in the DLC? Not sure. Kind of curious, but considering I've been saying these words a lot, seems like it's a possibility. <laughs> and this is pretty interesting. This is a bit of dialogue from Enya, the finger reader, and uh, she says... I'll read this section to give some context. The burning of the Erd Tree is the first cardinal sin. And you say you seek the power of the Rune of Death, too? The Rune of Death goes by two names. The other is Destined Death. The Forbidden Shadow, plucked from the Golden Order upon its creation. Destined Death, the Rune of Death being called the Forbidden Shadow, plucked from the Golden Order upon its creation. Now, obviously... This is coming from the perspective of Anya, who's sort of pro-Golden Order here, calling Death and Death the Rune of Death, the Forbidden Shadow, but it's just interesting language, considering everything we're learning about how America's sort of origins and the Erd Tree's origins and <laughs> is related to, uh, you know, seems to be the Land of Shadow. So calling it the Forbidden Shadow just thematically seems to tie in in a way that caught my attention. Because if, you know, we can't really, we don't have enough context to really draw any big conclusions. That's why I'm doing this, like, crazy conspiracy theory rambling thing right now. But from a more narrative, thematic, uh, like, sort of literary standpoint, just how these concepts have been used. And as a way to gauge, you know, will it play into some of these concepts or is it even playing in opposition to these concepts for, you know meaning and just sort of pondering that and there we have it the mentions of shadow in the Elden Ring dialogue and text an interesting overview just to keep these ideas in our mind you know because in Elden Ring shadow is both used as a means of obscuring something like we're kind of seeing the shadow of the Erd tree as well as meaning like shadow like being very loyal but even then too you have the facet of the shadows where, in the case with Merica, she used her shadow as a way to obscure something, but then also the function of the shadows for the greater will in the two fingers is that if the Empyrean doesn't want to play nice with the greater will in the two fingers, that it can be the shadows can be used as a curse or a way of controlling the Empyreans or taking them out if they become a problem. So I think it's just worth keeping that sort of range of meanings in mind as we think about Shadow of the Earth Tree as the title of the DLC and, you know, the title as a function of, like, thematic summary or, you know, giving sort of that encompassing meaning to the work. And Miyazaki saying that the Shadow of the Earth Tree phrase has multiple meanings. So yeah, <laughs> I'm rambling, but that was fun, fun to look at. And if you have any ideas, and I'm sure you do, uh, please feel free to comment them because there's no there's no right or wrong answers right now. I'm just spitballing and, you know, Elden Weight, not a lecture. I'm not necessarily reaching any conclusions as much as starting a conversation. Hearing your thoughts, just having fun as we wait for the Shadow of the Earth Tree to come in June. So, as always, thank you. And um, if you want to follow along with the Elden Weight, make sure to subscribe to the Lore Hunter. Turn on notifications so you get videos as they come out. Thanks for watching.